Welcome to Rubber Duck Engineering. Tonight we're going to look at multi-agent pathing, which is how you make lots of agents in a game not bump into each other. Hi, Dr. Berth. Hey, Eric. How's it going? Good. You know, it's uh, I'm a little tired because I I don't know I've fallen out of my sleep patterns. The um, the fireworks in my neck of the woods are insane. <laughs> Did they wake you up at night? Oh, we we tried to fall asleep, and I don't think we made it to sleep until one or two. Uh, you know, they set off very large explosions not very far from my home. So I thought that, like the fashionable thing these days are having all these like drones that would make colored lights and fly in formation, and that like actually exploding yes. fireworks are passe now. It seems strictly better. It's it's quiet and it makes amazing multicolored you know moving things. I saw but, some incredible ones on YouTube. There was like the Starship Enterprise in like 3D, like rotating around. <laughs> it's like, whoa. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Uh, I guess I should say before we get into it, I mean, it's a little early. Um, tonight, we're going to definitely exemplify that we have no idea what we're doing. Um, <laughs> Unlike most episodes where, where we also don't we know some what idea. we're doing. Dr. Barth was nice enough to prepare us a little template you did a starter flutter project with flame in, in, in close, right? Yeah, so we've done a bunch of game projects on the channel, but I think this is our first time trying out flame. Uh, I've done a couple of flame projects uh, just to like kick the tires and see what it's like. Yep. Um, it looks like a pretty neat framework. Like it's like uh, a lot of things that we keep finding ourselves redoing every time we make a game project that's built in, which kind of is the point of having a, a framework to help you. Yeah, it's really, um... So I've also used Flame some just to kick the tires. It's really new. Like ray casting was just added to the system today. Um, and it's sort of amazing how much has been built. Like the, the pinball game that we, we we demoed in my day job, uh, you know, at Google I.O. this last year, that was all built in Flame. Um, so, um, yeah, uh, let me press the buttons here. Yeah, should we take a look, look go to the code machine? Uh, yes, I have a full screen setup today, which is always slightly more awkward, and I forgot to Hello, share. Hello, James. Welcome. Hey, James. Um, let's see if that works. Uh, here we go. So this is what you built, and this is the example. Right in, in the nick of time, I changed it from being squares to circles, and hopefully I did it right. Um, it depends if you change the colliders or not. I, I think I did. I don't. So here, here's the code. The code is very short. Um, so standard flutter boilerplate. Um, this is your sort of root widget and your root widget state. Again, sort of, whoa, do we have two app bars? No, we have material app and then we have the app bar. And then we're centering our game view, which is a flame thing. Or sorry, I guess we've implemented this game widget is the flame thing. Okay, we're just, I, just, I just wrapped it in aspect ratio, so that's always square. Makes sense. And then you made two components, which is, uh, they're sort of like widgets um, and sort of like Unity components. Um, one's the objective, or you made three. Objective, attacker, no, just two. Just two. Objective, and attacker. OK, and this makes sense that you made them slightly. And the change that I made right before was I changed this to draw a circle, and I changed it to use a circle hitbox, although this may need to have a radius. I don't know if circle hitbox is smart enough to figure out that it, what its parent's width and height is and do the right thing. We'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll find out. And then this is game state. What do we got? I see we're adding a bunch of, or we're adding one objective. I think this could have just been add, by the way. And then you're starting a wave of attackers Generate attacker positions, which you do random along a single component at a specific Y offset. Yes, yeah, so this will all start at the top, and I put the objective at the bottom just for a okay. no particular reason. And did you have a vision, or am I am I providing vision today? Uh, my vision was just that the attackers would start going towards the objective. And then we would, I guess, the basic version of they would all just go to the go to the objective, mm -hmm. and then maybe we would add in some barriers, okay, uh, in the way, and then sort of see them try to path around the, the barriers. Yep. Okay. 
So the, the, the concept would be eventually to, to get a, like a tower defense game. So then, mm -hmm. in addition to barriers, maybe you could put like towers that would shoot shoot at the attackers and stop them from getting to the objective. I was playing a tower defense game uh, earlier this week, very briefly, and it occurred to me that tower defense games typically everything falls along a specific pattern or uh, along a specific lane. Um, maybe I haven't played complicated enough tower defense games. I was just checking out somebody's game engine. Um, like they, they make them walk like an S path, and then you're you're supposed to build the towers. Yeah, like the path is wholly. It's like walking through. There's one path. There's no like choosing of a path. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if other tower defense games, more sophisticated tower defense games, have choosings of a path. I don't know. Um, but yeah. So okay. So the naive thing uh, is that we have to teach. We have to somehow make it possible for. If we just make this thing have a objective, objective. Or, You're basically going to uh, teach how, the attackers. How, yeah, how are the attackers going to know where they're going? Hi, thanks for joining us. Yeah, I think you're on the right track. I think you want to, there's this, um, Flame has this thing called has game ref that allows you to get back to the Flame game object. I think caching the objective yeah. makes sense. Right. Or the co-pilot was just about to do that. There you go. Done. <laughs> I don't know if static is what we want. Static is what we want. Co-pilot uh, is, uh, you know. Uh, late, actually. That's not what we want. No. There you go. Okay. This should not be. OK, fine. Co-pilot didn't actually help. Yeah, I think you want to pull this out of here. Right? Yeah. Either way, it would work. And can and just be for my uh, my little brain, I'm going to make this objective instead. There you go. Okay. So then, up here on the attackers, you should say with with uh, has game ref. Uh mm -hmm. And now in your update function, which if you watched Unity or Godot, this is a like this is your your weekly callback. This is or uh, per frame callback. This is not how Flutter would do it, or this is not how, like the, the widget side of Flutter would do it. But this is how they do it in game in game town. I don't know why Copilot suggested this particular update function, but game rat objective contains. <laughs> nope. No, <laughs> Sorry, Copilot. Not, 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 not what I wanted. This is not the right signature for update, by the way. I, I don't know what the right signature is. I don't know if, like uh, help us. So that uh, not Copilot, but uh, Dart will do the. Sorry, uh, update. Update that. OK, there we go. <laughs> With enough code assistance, we should be able to write this program. Yeah. That's that's how we roll. Uh, I So I have been playing with Copilot a little bit. And I really, the, the feature that I like most about Copilot, I turned off the like public code thing. So I don't actually know what that does. I assume it, well, I don't know what it does. Um, but I don't need it spewing random licensed code in my into my um, into my code, if that's really a concern, we'll let the lawyers sort that out. Um, anyways, I um, I like that it does the sort of local based suggestions some of the time. Yeah, I, I find it's often good starter project. Like, um... okay, so this thing we have to figure out like where we're going. Oh, why? Why is it? Is that your side that's doing that? I'm not touching. Right. It. Something keeps collapsing it. Uh, so we need to do var destin. Oh, hello. Okay, copilot, you're okay. I'm turning you off. Maybe copilot and live share together do not get along. I don't know. Okay, so <laughs> var... too much smarts <laughs> fighting itself. You see how it like keeps some things, whatever. Var, um, I feel like this is HTML. Remember, HTML, I remember working on HTML editing and how you would have to have a magical. Like a non-breaking space or something to hold. Oh, they like keep open. track of things. <laughs> like, well, no, when you're editing a link, right, and you delete or editing a bold region or whatever, and you delete the last bold character, you need to have something in there to hold it open. Uh -huh. So that's what I'm doing with my foo here. Uh, so this is our uh, okay. objective. This is. You said there was some way to like get the game ref. Ga game ref. Yeah, game ref objective. I swear. Uh, okay. And then we want to say like uh, target. I don't know why it doesn't like us. Objective dot center. 
Oh, minus R center. That makes sense. This is like this the delta. Probably needs to be like as game state. Oh, you can do that here. So as game ref, you can give it a um, like a template parameter, and then it will it'll know the right type for you. Yes, I I, I see you. It, it's okay. Now game ref will have the right type. All right, good. Um, yep. Okay. So, so that's like a line that we're questing towards. We want to like normalize this, right? Yep. Delta dot normalize. Uh, normalize. I don't know if that modifies in place. Yeah, I can never tell. It does. It normalize it normalizes and returns the length. Okay. Well, Copilot is totally suggesting all the right code here, or at least the code that looks plausible. Good. Okay. Let's see what that does. Like I I have a dream that this will make all the the enemies go towards the why is it sad about your speed? Uh, what's wrong with that? Oh, I need to make it final, maybe? Oh, final. Right, we'll it could be fine. Or, or code or, assistance. Or finals. Like, eventually, the code assistance will just write all the code for you, right? Oh, my gosh, it's working. Ooh. It's doing a thing. <laughs> they all collect up. And they're still updating assistant. every frame, but. Well, we can add a collision now, so we can have them do something. Um, the like, okay. So I'm sorry, you're adding collision to to have the like the not bump into each other or what? Well, let's, I, I think we should focus on the pathing. So I, I think we have like v zero of pathing, which is they found the objective and they started walking there. Okay. So now we need to like put something in their way. Sure, we can drop some object, uh, some some. Uh... Just put like a barrier in the middle, like a. Um... Sure, we can just take your like same code here, right? And like drop barriers. Okay. So I'll, I'll make a barrier component, which I will make an actual rectangle. Okay. We wrote code like this, but on a grid before. For our um, sure, like, like, like how the floating point is gonna play in this um, world? Like, are we gonna have to overlay a grid at some point? Uh, so I have, I, I looked at this project, I looked at doing some of this pathing like a month ago uh, on a weekend. And um, where I ended up, yes, was that I wanted to approx, I, I wanted right. to like zoom out basically, uh, flat, is that is a that range? A range? Oh yeah, this is Dart. This is, this is like super. Uh, you can write like if statements and for loops and everything uh, in if, the middle of your lists. If you search for UI as code, uh, there was a blog post explaining these. That's how I always find these. But there's fors and ifs work inside. Um, there's some fancy it, name. Yeah, it's an example of how Dart has really been uh, like optimized as a language for creating UI. Because you often have like child lists in like these build functions, and sometimes you want to include a child, and sometimes you don't. And so they added this feature to the language to basically make that easy to do, and it, it made the code like way more beautiful. Instead of like having all these like variables and if statements, and then finally you get to your build state and you just write them all in line, just like a templating language. Like you'd have like a you know mustaches if or whatever, right? Something pandas are sad. Oh, I see you're in the middle of typing. Okay. All right, so I made a generate barrier positions. And careful okay. drawing code before, but we got rid of it. What drawing code? Uh, I wanted to draw a rectangle, but I wasn't sure how to get the rectangle for my thing. Oh. So the problem with rectangles is that then you need more um, sophisticated collisions because you can't just check your distance between centers. Well, we have a whole physics engine. Like, why can't we just use that for the collisions? Yeah. What are you, are you, oh, you forgot, you forgot the. 
I was just looking at how to, how to get a wrecked out of. Um... Yeah, two wrecked, I think is how you, yeah. Mm -hmm. did, did you spam the barriers in the middle of somewhere? Uh, I think I did. Add barriers. Oh, I, I don't think I called this. And I think it's one more R. Why does Flutter use Dart not in Zig or Nim? Uh, this is actually a, a very common question. So um, at some point in the project, if you go watch the before Flutter episode, actually, we talk about this um, a couple episodes ago. But it, we originally started out using JavaScript. Uh, and at some point, we um, stopped using JavaScript and went on a language selection uh, journey and ended up at Dart. Uh, so they're now drawing. There's no collisioning going on. Are you expecting that, like, I'm not sure what you're, like, this, so where is it? Mm -hmm. um, our moving of the attackers, this is not respecting any collisions. Right. So if you're expecting collisions to work, we have to change this. Uh, Dart existed before Flutter. Mm -hmm. uh, it was originally envisioned as a language you'd use to write uh, web pages in. Um, and so that, that's where like the Dart compiled to JavaScript comes from. So it was designed so that it could basically um, uh, efficiently compile to JavaScript, uh, which uh, we then uh, used in our, or not be, I was there at that time, but Flutter then used to create uh, Flutter web. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this positioning is not, Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, uh, it's just, yeah, so this is, I don't know if, if your theory that like hitboxes will save us here is correct, mm -hmm. but if it is, this is the first thing that has to change. Right, so we should try, maybe use a physics. Um, like there, there's a whole physics subsystem that we could try to uh, turn on. So yeah, I don't know much about that. The like box, box 2G? Yeah, so instead instead of like setting the position here, like we say center plus equal delta, we would give uh, like like a, add a force or something. Yeah, add a force that was like drawing the the thing to the target. Should we try to figure out how to do that? I bet there's something we mix into our component, or some child we give it to like give it a rigid body or somehow make it physically. Um. Should we, should we try to figure that out, or do you want to? Do you want to go the physics route or do you want to go some sort of other other route here? Um, so let's step back and, and talk about what it is, what we want these things to do at the end. So things I might want agents to do is to be able to path around obstacles, mm -hmm. be able to avoid other agents, um, maybe avoid each other, like not overlap with each other. Maybe that's the same as avoiding other agents. Um, and maybe even chase, like if this thing is moving, I'd want it to chase. Mm -hmm. Are there other things? Like the, the objective was wandering around. They should re sure. reacquire and move towards the objective. Yeah, like we could easily add like the ability to move the objective. Mm -hmm. um, and I think they actually have chase behavior now as they're currently implemented. Um, we might want them to follow waypoints. That's another thing you might have agents do, but we don't have to do that. Mm -hmm. I think you... I, when I've looked at this before, uh, this breaks down into two separate tasks, one of which is determining the high level plan of I'm going to move approximately this way, like, like along a path across the like global map. Or, uh -huh. And then the second is like steering behaviors of, oops, I bumped into something, let me try going left. Or I oops, see. I bumped into something, let me try going right. So we're missing both of those <laughs> pieces at the moment. Yeah, and I don't know, say if we just added forces to this. Mm -hmm. um, so like in Unity, you have like a rigid body and that probably exists in Flame too, I'd have to go look. Um, and you can apply forces to the rigid body instead of directly setting the position and that's maybe where you were going. But I think what you'll end up with with that is you won't have that steering behavior. You won't have any ability to get around. You'll just keep slamming into the wall with the same force. So maybe what we're missing is a map, right? Because in order to get this sort of global plan, we, instead of, like right now, we just randomly put the barriers at floating point positions. Mm -hmm. Do we need to like break down our um, play area into like a grid 
and then have some sort of data structure that represents the passability of different squares? So there are various ways to do this. Unity does, so I, I have done some reading on this, um, uh, again, many weeks ago. Uh, Unity and 3D game engines use nav meshes mm -hmm. to plan like passable areas, but they have to deal with 3D. We don't have to deal with 3D, we're doing a 2D here. Um, we could have a 2D nav mesh, right? We could just, like we could sample a bunch of points and then figure out like, are they connected? I don't think we actually need something that sophisticated. Other systems I've seen break it all down into integer math. Um, so what they would do is they would take, and this is the path that I was going on before I got distracted by other weekend projects, is that I would take this and I would divide it into 100 by 100. Okay. And then ASTAR knows how to do, you know, integer math in a, in a grid 100 by 100. And I'd plan my path at that level. And then they have, how would they have, like, uh, the barriers play to that? Uh, well, barriers would just... Um, ASTAR can plan around barriers and you would just take your barriers and you'd mark as barrier every square in your 100 by 100 that has a barrier partially overlapping it as a I rough see. estimate, right? Okay. So that would be an approximation. That was the direction I was heading down before, again, I got distracted. A, a nav mesh, you, you build up a floating point um, thing that is more aware of, like another thing we have to think about is like your width. Like mm -hmm. for example, between these two barriers, you can't you plan can, a path. Can, can you squeeze through there? And like the, the nav mesh approach, which I don't know a lot about, I've used nav meshes and I've read a paper on nav meshes, but mostly forgotten it. Um, know how to avoid that kind of thing. I guess I'm kind of tempted to break it up to like 100 by 100 squares and then align the barriers to those squares. Uh, th that's totally fine. You also could just have a, a, a one by one barrier that because it's floating point position ends up taking four up, up two by two squares. Right. Oh, I see. And then you just, you route a little extra wide around the barrier, but who cares? Mm -hmm. This is something I'm learning about games is that it's all just about the fun and not about the like precision. Um, but so if you're on board for the 100 by 100, I think we should try that. Cause I think that's- uh... Okay, let's give it a try. So the, the approach that I would use is I would take our existing, um, like the, the floating point thing and, yep. and, and, and project it down into a hundred by a hundred. Okay. Uh, so like an add barrier, you would just like keep track of, you'd have like a hundred by a hundred um, thing here, which is like, uh, like what, is this the nav grid? Is that what oh, and so, so going back to this, um, th this is also for, for, so, when I last looked into this, and again, actual game devs watching this should just correct me because I have no idea what I'm talking about. Um, when I looked into this, people don't try planning around movable objects. They only do the like nav grid planning around static objects. And then the steering behaviors are for movable objects. It's like, okay, fine, things bumped into each other. And Another thing that I've learned is also that collision radiuses are often in games much bigger than you think of them being. And they are not always firm. Like the collision radiuses could just be a trigger. So like an activation radius or something for, for a mob, like it wakes up, it starts to care about you when you're within, you know, some distance of it. So you could imagine starting to care about something and then, and then starting a steering behavior before you would actually run into them. Does that make sense? I see. That makes sense. But we'll just start basic, right? So I'm, I'm trying to make your nav grid idea here. So I'm trying to like keep keep track of this, and then um, like um, one big second, add barrier, pull up like a has a rect in it, I guess. Um. Be right there. I'm just getting. It's always hard when I'm doing like my full screen. What are you are you uh, questing after here? I'm questing after we have code for this. Oh, we do. Uh, we like a previous project. We have code not for the like reducing it down, but we like have grid code. Hmm. 
Right? Oh, from Lambda Battle? I don't know if it was Lambda Battle. Maybe it was one of the silly ones that I worked on. But I've totally written code for this. Um, we can also just write it again. It wasn't that hard. I'm going to just write it again. I don't think this is... Here it is. Uh, geometry and grid. Grid position and grid. I don't know if these are useful, but I'll copy it and we can decide we like or dislike it. OK. Um, so here's your nav grid. There's your grid. OK. Um, I can get UI size, too. So, so I'm not sure exactly how this is going to help me here. OK. We can try it. Um, what do we? Uh, yeah. Well, I was trying to write this function um, here online. Uh, so basically, if we add a barrier, I'm trying to figure out like which which cells to mark is not passable. Yeah. So like the way to do that with this grid code that I just posted in would be like, I know passable is equal to grid pool. Mm -hmm. I think filled by size 100. 100. And this is false. OK, that looks great. That's, uh, anyways, that's why I brought in these primitives is that we sort of typed out this code before. I guess so this is how be I, true, right? Like it, they're all going to start out passable. Oh, I see. That's fine. I, okay. Whether this is passable or uh, yeah, obstacles. So then I need to somehow, from my barrier, I need to figure out which of these cells to to uh, mark as non-passable, right? Yeah. So that's your um, your like scaling factor. Oh, look at this. Okay, so you actually don't want this hundred by a hundred specifically, so much as you want to like specify. You want to give it a size and a scale down, right? Uh huh. This looks plausible. What this thing just did. So basically, it's running through. I, mean, I don't know how efficient it is, but it's OK. Barrier contains position. Mm, we need like an intersect somehow, right? Well, so you also could just, um, so you could say barrier dot, if they're like a rect. Yeah, it's got a size, right? It's like the size of rect. rect. And then if you have your scale, scale is equal to, you know, 100. I, I don't know what our scale is going to end up being. And you just do, oh, I don't know, something's fighting me. Rect dot. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you do like, or r i equal to scale dot. Um, am I making sense? X dot floor. Mm -hmm. X less than scale dot. Um, right. This is going to be. Let's be left. This is right. Right dot ceiling. Okay. I don't know if that's the right way to do it. Well, but that's a good. way I could imagine doing it. Well, this is good. OK. Then we want to say like uh, plus plus x, right? And we want to do something similar for y. OK. You're t basically taking a. You're like inflating it a little bit, right? Yeah, you're, you're inflating the float range out onto an integer number line. This is just left, right? This is left, and this is uh, top. Great. Oh, we, oh, I never remember whether things go up or down. I don't remember either. You, you kind of want like max y and, and min y. Okay. You're really asking. And now you're going to say like passable. 
that syntax is totally wrong. It's a set grid position. Well, it's sad because of, oh yeah, it's like a set cell or something like that. I don't know that we implemented that operator. We could. Grid position x, y. Yep. False. So Oh, something is very mad. I think it's probably not enough curly braces or something. Okay. Uh, okay. Operation define type data. I don't know why we're using typed data. Probably for a vector or something. Uh, where do we go? This. So I don't know. How do we scale erect? Is that not a thing? We. Correct. This is like, yeah, sky live UI. Do we not have a scale for this? We must. Well, what would it mean? You just want to multiply each coordinate? Yeah. Inflate? Yeah. Oh, that's by a delta. I, I think you want to, I think this rect is not really helping you in life. Okay. Like you have your 100 by 100. Like, uh, I think this is, you're, we're close here, right? So, the nav grid, it needs to have a size, like a, a vector two size, world size. Okay. Well, I, I guess it's a basic problem of the, um, as we resize the window, the game like play area is changing the number of pixels it has. Like if you, if you go run, go to the app right now mm -hmm. and resize the window, it's kind of not gonna do something sensible. I see. See like the, the barriers come up. So I think what we need to do is we need to like normalize the coordinates inside the game area. So yeah, where I got to this divide is that I'm thinking about games that have a, a server client divide and the client might work in floats but the server for optimization purposes works entirely in integers. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're so, having to translate from like client coordinates to server coordinates here. Well, maybe we should just do that. Maybe we should make a client server split here and have like an integer representation of the model and then use the uh, flame stuff to provide the view. Okay. So I feel like I answered not the question that you asked. What is the, you, so, you want uh, to fix the resize issue? Yeah, I think we're coming with a couple different problems, but I, I think that like if we um, separate out the concept of the model from the view, we'll solve all of those problems. Okay. So like if we need a like world, this is like a world map, right? Okay, sure. Mm -hmm. And then the world map is just a hundred by hundred things. And then this is like create barrier. So this is like a grid static region. const size is equal to this. Right. And then we do need a way to like convert from world coordinates to. Uh, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save this for now, but yeah. Client coordinates and stuff, but yeah. We're going to say set, set, passable. Grid position. False. You want like a grid rect or something for this? Uh, rect. Hmm? Okay. What's what's a grid rect? Well, someone has to do. So this is the inflating, right? You're inflating from client coordinates to server coordinate. It's like convert from client rect to server rect and inflate. It's like, uh, it reminds me of the like uh, integer, like pixel alignment that you have to do in rendering engines in order to make sure there's no gaps between your... Uh... Yeah, I think there's like a design question here we haven't answered, which is you're, you're saying that the barriers should exist at floating point coordinates. Um... Mm, 
my sense is that if we say we were doing a fancy game, right? Mm -hmm. We wouldn't just have uh, um, square barriers. We'd have beautifully artistically hand drawn barriers, mm -hmm. and we could do a fancy nav mesh to allow our dumb mobs to like get into that little crevice next to our, you know, or we right. could just inflate to pixels, right? Inflate to voxels, which is what we're doing. And so I'm implementing a dumb inflate to server space for the collision and pathing stuff. Whereas our artists and whatnot get to draw beautiful. Yeah, okay, that makes, that makes total sense to me. So now, now I understand what you're talking about a good rect is like a, well, it's just a, a rect, but in, so like we have to decide this integer space, what floating point spaces correspond to? Like I'm tempted to say it corresponds to like a, um, like a zero in the middle, like plus and minus one. Like, oh, you're saying how do you map from world coordinates to client coordinates? We have an integer grid, right? So the question is, what is the floating point in the server, right? Or in model world, forgetting about pixels, we want to map a floating point um, mm. thing over here. So we have to decide, like, is zero the upper left corner? And is the upper right corner like a 100.0? Or is like zero the middle and the the upper right corner is like plus, you know, minus, you know, plus one X and minus one Y? Yeah. I think for sanity's sake, you want to, well, I, I don't know. I mean, it's, do we have a fixed size map or do we have an infinite size map? I think if we're just doing a simple fixed size map, I would just put zero, zero in one of the corners and just lock yourselves into a quadrant as opposed to trying to subdivide. So you have zero, zero is the upper left corner and one, sure. one is the bottom right corner. A uh, hundred, a hundred is the bottom. A hundred, hundred. Okay. So, so then, so then we can just take a rect as like, um, um, did add barrier. So this is then very close to what we had before, but we don't have to worry about our scaling. So this is our... Um... Because we do have a couple design questions here that like there's there may be a separation between what the, like the passability inflation, like maybe that operates at 100 by 100, but then you might also want... Yeah, I, I, I think I'm getting too deep in the weeds. Like for an MVP, <laughs> we just need to inflate to integers so we can run a star. Okay. And the flame, the flame folks have even written an a star. That's I think fancier than the one that I, I inherited from Seth. So then this just becomes this, right? So like the, we could also, I'm maybe over designing here, but if we just did class grid rect, or oh, I think we have I rect. If we if we write a way to inflate, yeah, right here. Um, okay, so you just want to take in an I rect. That way, you just take in an I rect, and then this whole this thing right here it just becomes left. Yeah, well, well, don't you? Yeah, anyway, you want that? You want to be like uh, irect, irect, and it's the, the caller's uh, job to inflate, inflate to integer irect or something like that, right? Yeah, can get bounding integer irect. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. And maybe this is an extension on rect, or maybe this just takes rect, whatever. But this just then is turn I rect. It's rect dot left dot floor. Mm -hmm. Rect dot right dot seal. Like I th I think we want to be in this world where like we've separated yeah. this out. No, that makes total sense. Four and so then this is really just our nav grid again. Okay. Yeah, I think it isn't end up being our nav grid because you might want to operate on different 
just because your nav grid only operates at the uh, resolution of 100 by 100, you could imagine wanting to operate at higher resolution in other parts of your of your system. OK, so then this should take the bounds. And then the first thing we should do is we should get our uh, rect equals inflate. It's just like uh, mark not passable. Okay. All right. So how do we connect this with the code that we wrote before? Uh, is there a way to iterate over all? I mean, we could like a way to do that if we assume the bears are never as we just. We just capture them here, right? Like this is part of the point of having we just take this list out of here, right? They like all barriers. Yeah. So this coordinate transform problem. Why? Um, so because right, right now these positions mm -hmm. are in pixels, and oh. we need to map them into the hundred by hundred. Uh they should be in client game coordinates. And in fact, I'm certain they are right now. The pixelness is the like camera. So I, I, I the the Dubabi has a notion of a camera. The Dubabi meaning flame. Flame has a notion of a camera. So we could just add a camera, and that would do the zoom for us. But it it would be a normal thing for uh, client coordinates to be in a logical space that then is mapped to a physical space at some given zoom. Okay, so we're, we need to do that somehow. Yeah, this is where we get to the, I don't know Flame well enough. It may just be a thing that Flame game does for us, or that maybe the Flame, the game widget does for us. We can look that up. Yeah, I agree. It seems like a very generic thing that any kind of game is going to want. There's a, I, I think the camera does this, or there's this viewport thing, and there's a way to make things follow... Let's see what this this viewport. Flame dot camera. But this is just the viewport. Point. Right, but there's a flame game dot camera. Camera and viewporting. Okay. I'm just reading the flame documentation here. Uh, the viewport interface has multiple petitions. Default viewport. This is the no op that associates with any flame game. Fixed resolution viewport. This viewport transforms your canvas so that from the game's perspective, the dimensions are always set to a predefined value. Okay, so this is what we want. We want a fixed resolution viewport. Great. So I don't we know just, how to use We just add one or do we just change it? I can figure out how to pull up that. Um, um, I'm not sure how to use a flame. Uh, okay, effective size. Fixed resolution viewport. Onload. Camera viewport. Here we go. All right, that, that looks legit. See, it's even better than Copilot. Camera viewport equals fixed resolution viewport. Oh, there. Okay. I copilot it for you. Okay, 100. And that's going to need dart.math, right? Or, oh, I see. We have it as math. So math.min. Oh. We're always scoring. Oh, okay. Okay, that's fine. All right, so that, that's pretty cool. So, can we? Does the game still run? Or did we did we hopelessly break it? Oh, we totally broke it. I'm sure. Whoa, whoa. Okay, so now we're okay. We definitely affected the the geometry. There, th these things are now just too big. So we can just shrink them down. Well, do we? Why don't we? Why don't we just make this um, a thousand? I think hundred is fine. Like hundred is fine. We just we just had random constants for the size of these things before. So we could just change them. So like these should be at one instead of a hundred or ten. Yeah, the barrier should be twos or whatever. Yeah. What so are what these? Are these this is objective. Oh, I see. Ew. 
the attackers are still huge. <laughs> Maybe they are. Maybe this is boss battle. And speed is now way too fast. I'm going to cut, cut down the speed by a factor of... I bet I can put this over here and... Ah! And this over here and everyone's happy. Except no one can read anything anymore. Pew! Still, right, still way too, too fast. Still way too fast. All right, let's cut this down. A... I just make it one. How about that? Uh, so that would be like one, one unit a second. It's still way too fast. Huh? But I'm not sure it's actually changing. Well, where is it? our? It's on line ninety-nine that I'm changing it. That that should be half a unit a second. I'm not convinced that the edits I'm making here are actually affecting things. I'm going to make it a zero. Well, that's going to cause. I'm going to make it negative, negative 0.5. Just to see if it's actually having an effect. No, it's not having an effect. Huh. Maybe because it's a constant or something? Well, you're, the problem is you're just normalizing the delta and you're not actually. You, you're applying these things, but like... How did you do that? No, because I think normalize doesn't return... It returns a double. So you want to... You want normalized. You want. Now, okay. now your life will be happy. Okay. <laughs> yes, okay. now they're going the wrong way. Slowly. <laughs> they're going the wrong way in a one-way street. All right, I'm going to change this to two and see what that does. Way too terrible. Slow. I'm gonna make it five. I was gonna feel right. Okay, great. So now we have our nav mesh. Well, we don't have a nav mesh, but we have a like a, a navigational grid. Okay. That we theoretically have populated. Did you want to assign to Delta? Yeah, James, <laughs> you got us. Um. Okay, so. Uh, totally not enough bearers, by the way. I'm going to increase the number of bearers by a factor of 10. Um, so there is a, um, a star oh, yeah. a star algorithm. In flame? Is the, is the nicer one that somebody made for Dart? Maybe not. I, I don't know if it's... There's one that actual game that's made. That was not me. Okay. Um, if I look for on pub... I look for a star. Oh, search, you're letting me down. There's one that one of the like flame authors made. I don't think it's this one. I think it's just... Was that the one you made? No. Um, I'm trying to remember who the like flame authors are. I'll remember the gentleman's name when I see it. Aha! Here we go. A star algorithm. Found it. All right. Nailed it. Um, oh, barriers. Okay, we can, we can convert our thing into this format. Or maybe they take other formats. Yeah, it's a little weird, but this will work. I don't know if this is any better than the other one, but this, this should work. Offset is a float, isn't it? Uh, yeah. That's okay. We'll start with this and see what, what this does. All right, let's do it. Um, terminal flutter add, uh, pub add. Okay, and you're gonna want something like this. Yes, yeah, so this is gonna tell you you're like. I wonder if it's doing the um, the gridding for us. Mm, might be. I mean, we can we can just go look at it. Um, I it is. The for it. 
I, I've been extolling these virtues, but I, I'm not actually sure this is. I'm not sure this is actually because, like, it probably shouldn't depend on flutter, and it's not clear that it should be taking um, float offsets. But yeah, where is the get? Yep. Yes, Raphael. Who, in his defense, this is 300 lines of code, 400 lines of code. Um, I'm sure I've got the job done. Oh, you can do with diagonals. What does with diagonals mean? I think. Oh, it's, you can like walk through the diagonal. I think it's going to hand us back. Right, we just try it. Um, but it's going to hand us back a list of offsets to, to chase to. So we're then going to have a path of like, go to this, to this, to this, to this. It'll be like our path that we consume. I see. Okay. In fact, we can just make our um, things change to do that now. All right, let's do that. Saving <laughs> before we screw it up. Um, okay, so if we look at our attackers, yeah, so if they have like a um, oh, formatting or something, uh, so if we want list, so like their, their waypoints or whatever, um, yeah. okay. I don't know if we should break this into a separate component to make it more composable or something, but this, but this, well, let's, work. Let's, we only have nine minutes left in the show, so let's try to get something working. Um, and then I think we need like a, a like a radius bubble close enough. Like that. Okay. okay, and then. So you're basically our, going to change, change our objective. Okay. So then when these things wake up, you know, void. Yeah. So this then has a like a uh, offset objective. Let's always path that first, right? Uh, it's the like the thing that the path is going toward, but that's fine. That, that could be just path that last, right? Um, but somehow you have to generate the path. Void uh, move to, uh, and this is going to be then offset offset, right? And do pathing. Right? And now we're just going to do first. Path is equal to uh, right. Let's... Yeah, that looks good. What did I screw up? Notifying vector. To offset. Okay. Oh, we're going to get this like vector to offset difference. I don't know how to convert between each other. Vector to like this. The flame keeps everything in these vector to stuff, presumably for like SIMD and stuff. I don't know. Or maybe that's just because that's the primitives that we exposed, like the root level of the Dart ecosystem. I've been staring at the JavaScript ecosystem recently, and I've realized that that's a that is a quirk, maybe a good like and that. a bad of the of a strongly typed ecosystem like Dart, mm -hmm. is that you're really dependent on having base things available because you don't have duck typing to lean on. And so, like the fact that we have vector two in um, like that is then the vector two for the entire ecosystem. Let's see. Anything with an X and a Y. What's that? Can't just be anything with an X and a Y. It can't just be anything with an X and Y, right? If the distance to 
they need to like advance along the path, right? I wonder how other strongly typed ecosystems solve this. Maybe with traits or something like that? Interfaces? I'm not sure. I bet C Sharp had to think about this, and I bet it's all interfaces. Yeah. Java, presumably, too. Okay. Waypoint. Yeah, so you're making these uh, waypoints. It's really, oh, sorry. Oops. Lost it. They're sort of not waypoints because they're like, they're like the actual path steps, but you could, I guess, simplify the paths. That's fine. They're, they're way, waypoints is fine. Oh, like the waypoint is like your higher level, like I'm gonna go here, here, and there. And these are like, okay, step, 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 step. Yeah, these are, at least that's the way this A star is exposed, that it gives you all the offsets. That's fine. So you can just call it next point. And as you said, we, we don't have a lot of time, and I'm uh, I'm impeding our MVP progress by niddling over names. Oh, vector three. I think you can just Between do vectors. Offset. You can just do offset offset two vector two. They have extensions. Flame does. Oh, okay. So you just do runaway point two vector two, and uh, we can get. I can find the extension. It's like a or package. Oops. Come on, help me. You don't complete me here. What's going on? That should give us all the magic extensions. Hey. Okay, that's good. Okay. Uh, so this is not going to work when there are no. Oh, okay. So this should be nullable, maybe? Mm -hmm. If objective is null and return. I mean, there's just nothing to do if we have. I'm um, sad that it's set like the the text isn't reformatting properly. There's a parse error. Uh, variables must be. Oh. oh, there's too many question marks. Okay, sounds good. So now we just need to compute the path. Do pathing. Well, let's see if this works. Because this this should be like no change, except now we should just stop once we get there. OK, so we need to call move to somewhere. Uh, move to should just happen like on load or whatever. Uh, maybe when we add the barriers here, we'll do move to. We'll do, um, uh, um... Maybe attacker. Uh, sure. Uh, like when we add the attackers, we can just have them move to the. Oh, like in their constructor or whatever. Okay, that seems legit. Uh, oh, so well, uh, I would actually do it on load. Have you done it? Otherwise, I'll go for it. I'm going to do uh, move to. Oh, will it be mounted? It might need on mount. It doesn't matter when it's mounted, right? It matters when the um, well, the, the objective is mounted. Is mounted. Mm -hmm. There is the game ref thing. It's like uh, yeah, there you go. We're just gonna add it to the. That's good. Uh, we, we did this location offset, right? Okay, Center. Right. Yep. Sorry. Correct. All right, so we see if that works. Okay, let's do a. Ah, why are you? 
Why are you locked in hot reload battle for all time? We're so close, so close. And we're a minute over. So what is the last, our last little splat of code is we literally copy out. The last little splat of code is we have to integrate with this A star algorithm package to actually compute the waypoints or the path segments or whatever. Well, let's see if it works. I think we're close on that, but that may need to be next week. I wonder why this application takes so long. Go ahead, sir. You're just so used to hot reload where everything is instantaneous. I know I'm I'm completely broken as a result okay. of too many years of flutter. So it, it, it works. They're able to go along their waypoints. Their one right. waypoint. We why don't we give them another waypoint just in the middle? Like let's make them go to like um uh, offset like 50 50. I was gonna give it like something way off path, like zero fifty, then then go to uh, we'll make them all go to one thing and then continue yeah, 50, on 75 and, and then go to where you're going. Okay. We're testing or our path. path. Or const. Or consts. I demand yes. the const. We must. They should just. Oh, oh, there we go. They're all good over there. Now we're going to see whether they can actually go to a second <laughs> location. They're good. We should have increased the oh, speed. Oh, 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 oh. It's like Brickle bouncing off the wall. <laughs> I don't know where I sent them. Pew! You sent them a 5075. I don't really. Oh, I guess that's right there in the middle. Look at that. Look, look at that expert pathing. And they didn't even crash when they got to the end. Okay, so we know this works. Let's let's copy paste our A star and and know that it's going to just perfectly work. OK. This will be the, the grand finale. We can yeah. copy the example code and have it do a thing. Oh, this is totally the grand finale. This, this is how we end every episode with perfect, perfect timing. Oh, whoops. That doesn't need material. Not sure. No, we, need the, we need the A star package, right? Oh, why did it say material? It really wants you to have material. Yes. Okay. Um, all right, so this is this is one like path is equal to a star find path dot to list. Mm -hmm. That's showing you waypoints. Yep, yeah, got it. And this is yeah, end is going to be offset. And start is going to be like center dot, center dot to offset. Okay. And this this find path thing needs to go onto. This doesn't belong here. Okay. Uh, it belongs on our nav grid. Mm -hmm. Trying to find our nav grid. <laughs> we dumped everything in one file. It makes things fine. <laughs> All right, so um, this is list offset path path two or um, yeah from two find yeah. path uh -huh. offset start offset. This is like vector two offset thing is driving me nuts, but for sure it would we will we will come to peace. We're coming to peace in the world about that in the moment. Turn, right. And so the rows is now going to be world size, world size dot. dot width. Yep. We're going to find we just want our own A star instead of. Okay. This is a place to start. This is totally a place to start. Okay. So start. And then end. And then barriers. This is just uh, passable dot cells. It's like uh, for yeah. cell in passable dot cells. If oh, I think you can just map. I think you're. 
But you, you keep going. But I think, but whatever. You, you, you keep going. I'm going to go make this go. What a map? I didn't understand. How the hell did we get there? Map. Just representation. Like, we don't have, we could have, like, have barriers be our representation. Yes. Agreed. Um, I'm going to make a grid position. Just a list of grid position. A grid dot. Add. Literally, like, set. Center. This is two. Right, where where are you typing? I want to see what you're typing. Use collection literals where possible. Um, I don't know what that means. Mark not passable. I see. You really this is like a, a, a nav grid builder is what this is. It's like mark not passable. But yeah, we can just compute it every time. It's not that big a deal. But yeah, you want to build your nav grid. It's like you want to bake your nav mesh, right? You want to set up your static world and bake your nav mesh. We're, we're, we're hacking and slashing here at the end. Yeah, we are. Okay. Well, we're six minutes over. That's, that's how we roll. OK, what is the, um, the what do we call it? Grid position. How do I take a grid position and I turn it into an offset? I'll just make I don't know that that extension was written. Oh, we'll just add it. Offset to offset. OK. This thing. Oh, it's called float to double. Grid. OK. Iterable offset, yes. Did you actually call this find path method? Yeah. Okay, great. Our argument vector two, this is two offset. <laughs> we have to do a pass where we rationalize this offset stuff. Okay. Use collection yeah. literals. Whatever, it's fine. It's, it's try, try running it, see what it does. <laughs> You're saying I, like, I can't fix my warnings? You, uh, like. Huh? Uh, I mean, this is a reasonable thing. Like this is, a, they're, they're going on a, actually a nice path. They're just not avoiding the barriers. So we did something right. Maybe we may be at, at the end of our. But OK, path. but they selected a reasonable path. They just don't know how to. We somehow didn't get all the barriers in place. Do we ever call mark not passable? We call mark not passable. What, what, what happens if we show? We, we missed our dramatic conclusion. We were so close. Well, those are a lot of offsets. Hmm. Huh. And what do we pass for barriers? Uh, how do I make this? I think we're over time, but we're quite close. We are quite close. Oh, well, it's a shame. We, we we so so nearly had it, as is with all software. I think it's pretty good. Like we we got those things. They're actually following reasonable paths. Like they're those are probably like I, I don't know why they're why they go to here and then down as opposed to just down. Well, it's like a one way the, point that was here. The multi agent thing is when they start to avoid each other. I think that's, that's when it, it gets interesting, which which we will do next week. So, anyways, wonderful to see you as always. Uh, thanks to folks for hanging in there with us. Um, and, uh, we'll see you all next week. Yeah. See you next week. Thanks for coming.